Hey guys, Ivan here. So, Chicago Pro 2023. I'm sorry guys for not being here sooner, for not breaking the news, but sometimes I actually prefer it this way. I can take my sweet time and really enjoy analyzing the show. We can take a look at a scorecard and what the bodybuilders said on their social media. We can really analyze the show, we can check out all the poses, all the comparisons. So I hope you guys enjoy it, I will definitely enjoy making this video. If you guys like it, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Now let's go, let's start first with the front double bicep and here was your top 6. I think at this point it was pretty obvious that Blasting of Oribu and Patrick Moore weren't in a conversation of winning this show. They were really off at this show, they definitely were out of that top 5, they were in the second callout, we're gonna focus on the first callout first and then we're gonna take a look at the Blasting against Patrick Moore. But really there isn't much to see, those guys really missed it. However these three guys right here, let's say they brought it, I mean it wasn't exactly the most competitive Chicago Pro ever. You know, when Nick Walker was fourth against the Kim Williams, Justin Rodriguez, I think that was a much better Chicago Pro. This one, I don't know, not really the deepest lineup ever. So we have Stanimal here in the middle, you have John De La Rosa who just made a comeback, and you have a pro debut of Justin Shire, and this was your top three. I'm sure you know what are the results, Justin Shire won his pro debut, John De La Rosa uh, was second in his comeback, uh, Stanimal who made a switch from men's physique, classic physique to open bodybuilding was third, and in fourth there was Blessing of Oribu in horrible shape and Patrick Moore in even worse shape, so that was your top 5. The winner of this show was only 222 pounds. As you can see, Justin's coach, Matt Jensen, who really nailed it this year, who has a lot of Mr. Olympia qualifications under his belt for this year, he posted this information on his story. Justin Shire didn't want to disclose this information online. He was asked about it, he didn't want to say it, because he probably didn't want people to say he's not going to win because he's too small. Like Fuad Abiyad was saying many, many times so far. You know, he used to sponsor Justin Shire, he pretty much made him popular. Then in the end there was this whole drama between them. Anyways, in, in Fuad's predictions on his podcast, he said multiple times in his predictions that Justin is not gonna be able to win this show because he is too small. He didn't say it in those words, but he did say that he isn't uh, massive enough, he, didn't, he doesn't have the mass, he is not on that level of muscularity, put it whichever way you want, you know exactly what he said, what he meant, and he was right. I mean, Justin is not exactly the biggest bodybuilder of today, once again, 222 at his height, and he's not exactly a short bodybuilder. I believe he's like five foot eight, nine, something like that. He's taller than Nick Walker, for example, and he's 222, yet he was able to win this show. I'll be honest, I was surprised that he won the show. I didn't expect this to happen. I thought it was probably gonna be Stanimal or John De La Rosa if he brings good conditioning or Blessing of Oribu. I really didn't think Justin had it because I saw all the, pre all the physique updates in which he did look underwhelming. He seemed like he didn't make progress, but I thought it wasn't enough. He didn't look big enough to me, but apparently I was wrong and yeah, he pretty much deserved it. Now here, in this first shot, front double bicep, I feel like this shot pretty much tells you everything you need to know. Now first of all, I gotta say the background at this show was horrible. I mean, what the hell are these guys thinking? I mean, the, look at the background, look at the, the, look at the color of it. It's the same color as these guys are, their skin is. So it's completely, their physiques blend in the background. You can't see what's what. A horrible background, horrible. But... It is what it is, so first of all, in the front double bicep, you can see pretty much exactly what is going on, and Justin is definitely winning this shot. Now, first of all, Stanimal, who is in the middle, who is the tallest guy here, who has like the biggest frame, probably, who is occupying the most space, is not winning this, because he is still a little bit too small to the arms, and compare those arms to those of, of both John De La Rosa and Justin Shire, and yeah, you can get away with small arms in classic, but in open bodybuilding, it will not be forgiven, you need to have really big arms, and Justin definitely does have that. 
also we taper you know popping lats now justin has a little bit uh, higher inserted lats a little bit more than a little bit but still it looks good you know his waist is small his lats are massive just bigger thicker than those of stanimal and john de la rosa was also very good but he wasn't in good shape Justin beat him because of condition. He was a little bit sharper than him and he was a little bit bigger than Stanimal. Now front double bicep is easily won by Justin and second place here is John De La Rosa who did play second at this show. Very similar situation in the front lat spread. Again, the size of the arms are the problem for Stanimal and also the lat thickness. And as far as conditioning, Justin is better than, than John De La Rosa, and that's why he's winning this shot as well. Uh, in the side pose, I really liked what Justin looked like in the side pose, especially his legs. His legs looked really thick in the side pose, especially the hamstrings. Now, I found this particularly interesting because recently, a couple of weeks ago, Justin posted his back physique update and Matt Jensen posted a story and also Justin wrote about this in the caption of that post they were saying both then basically that variations of deadlifts pretty much hip hinging movements are good for back development now I thought when I saw that photo of Justin I thought okay yeah they're probably right but now after seeing this show after seeing Justin on stage I can definitely see that those movements are great for hamstring development because Justin's hamstrings are definitely bigger and better back however you're gonna see in a moment is not good definitely not good is it improved I don't think so maybe a tiny bit but definitely not good so whatever Matt said he was wrong I believe what John Jewett was saying deadlifts are not ideal movement for back so John Joyt is right, Matt Jensen is wrong, you're gonna see that in a second. Now as far as side chest pose, yeah, Justin won this one, because again, lower body, really thick, upper body, he really knows how to hit this pose to bring his chest up, to stand tall and show the width at the same time, show his massive arms, uh, once again bigger, more massive than Stanimal, but sharper than John De La Rosa, so he wins this pose in this call out. Now let's see the back. Here you can see it's a much different story than it was in the front poses. I think Stanimal wins this one hands down, easily, because he's definitely in the best conditioning here, the glutes, the hamstrings, and more importantly, the back. I mean, look at his lats. They're separated, they're showing graininess. He's definitely the leanest guy here, he has the biggest frame, and he knows how to hit the pose, this pose, and he looks good. Lower body as well. Now, you can see that, again, Justin's hamstrings really blew up. I guess those hip hinging movements really helped his lower, lower body from behind. Like, those hamstrings are big, man. His legs are really big from behind. Um, again, the conditioning, uh, John De La Rosa didn't bring it. He definitely failed with conditioning. He can sharpen it up for the next show if he wants to. He can do pretty well. But here, he wasn't really in great condition. He won. He actually took the second place because of his shape, because of his muscularity, not because of conditioning. And Stanimal, even though he was in better conditioning than Justin and John too, of course, he wasn't able to beat these guys because they are, you know, open bodybuilders. They are bigger. You know, he came from the classic. He still needs to bring up those arms, especially those shoulders. Overall, he needs to get a little bit bigger. But Justin, yeah, like he was big enough, but that back definitely wasn't. It still needs to come up. It's still a weak back. And you can see in these back poses how, uh, how conditioned he was. I think he was much sharper last year at the Nationals. But yeah, he was conditioned enough, I think Matt Jensen really nailed it, he got him as conditioned as he needed to be, uh, while retaining the fullness, the size, so he was still, you know, he was good enough, he won the show, what am I talking about, but again, back wasn't really improved, it's still a pretty shallow back, not the widest back, uh, again, those hip hinging movements did wonders for his lower body from behind, for those hamstrings and glutes, I guess, those glutes are also very, very good, like, they could be more conditioned, but they were good enough, and the back needs more work, it needs to be especially drier, like, if he wanted to go all the way out with conditioning, if he wanted to be really conditioned and really remove all the fat, all the water from his back, 
he would have had to die down a little bit more and lose another 10 pounds or so and then do an open pro show at the weight of uh, like under 212 you know that, that's definitely not a good idea that definitely wouldn't be i don't think it would have been a successful scenario he would have probably lost to john de la rosa they did well they did what they needed to do but justin needs to do a lot more work especially as far as bringing up that bag bringing up overall muscularity getting the size up and then you know affording himself to get conditioned to get really conditioned because this this conditioning is good for chicago pro for this show that wasn't that really isn't a top tier show it's second or third tier let's be honest it's a really weak chicago pro but again yeah he won a pro show he's going to the mr olympia uh he won't do really well over there let's be real but hell he has the structure he has the lines he has everything really he needs more time to bring up some body parts to bring overall size and to be able to come in super conditioned and then you know he can do really well but this year yeah, he got a pro win and that was awesome, same story in the back lats part pretty much, again, there is no width there, there is no thickness, he definitely needs to work harder on bringing that back up, but he won a pro show, he's going to the Mr. Olympia, I'd say this is a very successful year for Justin. I think he also won the side tricep, I think he won all the side and the front poses and uh, not really the back pose, I think he lost both back poses but as far as all the other poses, he was just the best combination of fullness, of size, of conditioning and everything, like the best combination of everything here and that's why he won. By looking at the scorecard, I think it's pretty obvious that Justin was clearly in that first because there is a gap between him and John De La Rosa, like, John didn't have 6 points, he had 7 points, and he was in 2nd, Justin had perfect score, pretty much 3, and then you can see that it was also pretty close between uh, Patrick Moore and Blessing, but also it was close, very close between Stanimal and John De La Rosa, so that, that second spot and that fourth spot, they weren't exactly certain, but as far as the winner of the show, it was pretty clear that Justin deserved this one. Now, as far as these two guys, check out Blessing's waist. What the hell did this guy do? As far as these two guys, Patrick Moore and Blessing of Oribu, I really don't know what to say. I mean, both of them are talking big talk, and when it comes to showtime, they rarely deliver. I mean, Patrick delivered only once, 2019 Mr. Olympia, and Blessing he brought it a couple of times, like that Indie Pro in New York, he was really good then, and he was pretty silent throughout this entire prep, so we didn't really expect much from him. But as far as Patrick, he's always talking like he, he, he's something special, like he's the future. You know, he is the man, he always writes these crazy captions about being something, I don't know, whatever, but look at him, look at the conditioning, I mean, how did he even dare showing up like this? This is gas posing conditioning, look at the glutes, no separation whatsoever, none, there is a whole bunch of fat on those glutes. I mean, really disappointing, really, really embarrassing, I would say, for somebody who has been talked about as like the future Mr. Olympia, the next Ronnie Coleman, and he took that, he embraced that, and he really, he really tries to lift himself up in his captions and all, all the posts that he's making, but when it comes to stage time, this is what we get, really disappointing, really embarrassing, Patrick do something about this man, come in condition for once, and take an off season and actually try to grow a little bit of muscle, I mean, he was uh, top 10 at that Mr. Olympia once, and we all thought he is the man, he is the future, but yeah, no, he's definitely the best. Blessing, yeah, he messed it up, he didn't bring the best conditioning ever, and his waist looked really blown out for some reason. For somebody who is really known for having a small waist and really good aesthetics, I was disappointed when I saw this, and his legs don't look like they were any bigger than before, but he made a statement in which he kind of explains what happened, but what I believe happened here is him simply trying to get as big, as quick as possible, which kind of blew out his waistline, and when he tried to come in condition, he probably realized at some point that he is late, so he tried really hard to make it, and then he lost the fullness, but he didn't make the conditioning, because he was doing his prep alone without a coach, and yeah, it was the whole thing was a mess, so he didn't bring a good package in the end. 
So he posted this on his social media, basically a photo of himself at one week out, in which I don't think he looked much more conditioned, maybe he was a little bit drier, I don't know, it's different lighting, but you can see the glutes here and hamstrings as well, like, there is no separation, he definitely wasn't in good condition. And he says here, uh, from one week out to one day out, um, not the leanest I've been, but we were on to something until I let the pressure and stress got the best out of me, plus messing with the peak. I don't think I see this, it's not just the peak, it's not just the water manipulation and like fullness, uh, flatness, no, I think he still had a lot of body fat to lose. Then he says, and the reason why I kept the prep off social media was to minimize the stress and the pressure. Now I understand why it's not a good idea to try and prep yourself, but everything was going amazing, might have been a little behind on the conditioning, but it was getting lit, so basically, yeah, he realizes that he wasn't really spot on with conditioning, he was a little bit behind, there is time, there are more shows, he can get conditioning in check, but yeah, he realized that it's, it's not a good idea to prep alone, everybody needs a coach, and he does, of course, uh, he also says uh, things can be turned around in real quick, still got a couple of weeks, I think it's time to reach out to a coach. Now, the question is which coach it's gonna be? I would go with Matt Jensen, for sure, I I'm sure he would accept him, as you can see Matt Jensen is doing wonders with his people, with his clients, he's really nailing it, I think he got 6 or 7 Mr. Olympic qualifications uh, this year in men's bodybuilding, so yeah, that's a good coach. After Heiner Rambert, who isn't really doing with everybody, who is just focused on a couple of guys, Matt Jensen is second best bodybuilder, but considering how many clients he has, you could say that he's the best coach of today, so I think Blessing would, should go with him, I don't know if he will, but once again, it's it's not just the peak mistake, maybe he messed that up too, but there was more to it, for some reason his waistline looks blown out, maybe it's not only the off-season pushing the weight, pushing the food, pushing the training, maybe he just did something wrong the day before, maybe he had too many carbs, too much food, and that's how he messed up his midsection, I don't know, but yeah, definitely not the best version of Blessing of Audible, we'll see if he's gonna change something in a couple of weeks. Once again, Justin Shire won this show, definitely was improved from his previous showing, could have he been better, for sure, there is definitely a lot more room to improve his physique on, but, you know, winning a pro debut, that's definitely a very successful feat, so congrats, Justin, he's going to the Mr. Olympia, he will be there against the very best in the world, so once again, huge achievement, and that's gonna do it for this video, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please, once again, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, thank you so much, guys, for all your support, all the best, and bye-bye.